This video shows how to build an assay. It is for anyone new to Instinct V or anyone who wants to refresh their basic knowledge and skills. Here in about 10 minutes, you will learn how to set up the instrument workspace with Labware and how to create an assay ready for simulation like you see here with tubes, plates, and all the pipetting activities. And this only requires knowing how to set the where what and how, which we will cover in this video for Instinct V. If you want to learn about the features and basic navigation, please watch the introduction video. To build an assay, we begin with a system document so that Instinct V knows where all the items are located for the assay. The system document defines both the instrument hardware and the workspace labware. So let's begin by examining the existing system document created for this video. After logging in, the dashboard appears, and from here, we can open an existing system document, like you see here, or we can use the Quick Doc button right here, select System, and from the list, we'll select Build an Assay System, which is already created for this video and for the assay we're going to build. Click Open, and after it opens, use the toggle buttons to go back and forth between this instrument view, which is mostly hardware, and the workspace view, which is mostly carriers or our labware. Now, let's close this document and see how to create a new one just like it. To create a new system document, we'll use this Quick Doc Creation button. Select System. And the new system document will be created. You can see the temporary name up here, and it has a version number. We begin by defining the system instrument configuration. This is where we define the chassis, pipetter, and other hardware for our MicroLab Vantage. The first thing we're going to do is select modules. We'll place a 2 meter logistics cabinet. Simply double click, and on top of that, we'll place our pipetter. So again, double click. And all of these items appear in the instrument inventory. In this case, we have a 2 meter size. And if you had a 1.3 meter, you simply select that size over here. And you can zoom in or out with the mouse wheel. You can also use any of these controls for zooming and panning. Let's continue now by adding our pipetting arm. So again, double click. And we get a pipetting arm with eight channels that you can see here in the inventory. And the other information about it is over here in the properties. For example, we can add an independent plate gripper, the IPG, by clicking this box. And you could add a 96 or 384 head. And when you do, you'll see it appear. We won't be using that for this video, so you can change it back to none. And any mistakes you made, simply select the item. You can use the right mouse click and delete it. So it's that easy. Click in the open area and everything is back to the way it was. Now let's finish our instrument configuration. Let's add a waste chute to our deck. So double click. And wherever you see it, you can change the location by simply moving it over. Now it's here. Let's add an entry exit. Double click and it will appear in the default location over here. So we have our entry exit. We have our waste. And along with our waste, we're going to add a waste drawer right below it and this way our tips can be ejected and they'll go into the waste drawer. And now that we have defined our instrument configuration, that is our hardware, we can go to the workspace and set up the labware to complete our system document. Let's click the workspace toggle button and here in the set of tools we can select labware items and other modules. Let's begin from the list by selecting a plate carrier and placing it at a convenient location. It's a five landscape deep well carrier with six tracks and the position of the tracks are shown right here and there are other settings you can choose. And now we can select a 24 tube carrier. Place it by simply dragging and dropping and a carrier for tips. Keep the mouse button held down and place it. And now we have a carrier for tips, 
a 24 tube carrier which will be our source and a carrier where we will place the 96 deep well plate which will be our target. And if you use an entry exit you'll need at least one magazine. Select it and then place it at the desired location. And this can be used to hold tips or plates. As you can see select from the drop down list and just drag and drop based on your assay needs. Now we have both the instrument configuration and the workspace configuration so only one more thing is needed. We need to set the position resources for the lab where we just added. This will provide unique names and locations where items are located for our assay. Here, back in our workspace, notice that we have two resources already set, maintenance and verification, and these are used during startup to calibrate the track ripper and the channels. But we can generate all the remaining resources by clicking this icon, Generate Resources, and now you can see that all of the other items that we placed are identified and given a default name. To give it a specific name, we can highlight and type over, or let's delete this one for the tubes, click Add New Resource, and we can type in a name this way also, RES for Resource and Tubes, and then click this icon to link it, and just draw a line to the exact location and click. It's really that easy. And now the workspace is complete. There are some unused resources. In addition, these resources for five more plates or for a reagent trough have also been added. And during an assay, if the assay calls for them to be used, they will be. If not, they will be ignored by Instinct V. So with our system instrument configuration completed and with the workspace completed, our system document describes where all of our position resources are located. We'll save our document with a descriptive name. Now we can move on and build our assay and define what items will be used and how the pipetting will be done. Here's a simple assay created for this video. It picks up tips, it aspirates liquid from the tubes, dispenses into wells on the plate, and then ejects the tips into the waste. Notice the box at the top left. This is where the system document is selected. This is the one you just saw where the position resources were set. And double clicking on either the lab or items or the pipetting activity brings up the properties that you can set. So let's close these and we'll walk through the steps to build this assay. We use the quick dock button to create a new assay document. And here in the blank assay document, we can select the system document that we just created for this assay. There it is. And now we'll go to the toolbox and select what processing items to use. Here we select our source, the 24 tube rack, and insert it. Then double click to set the properties. The starting and ending position resource locations, res tubes, which is defined in our system document and we select the lab bar type from this list. For our target, we select a 96 well plate, then double click and set the properties. Select the starting and ending position for our resource from the drop down list, and also the lab bar type from this list of plates. And the transportation settings have default values that we can use for our assay. Now that we have defined what will be used in the assay, we only need to define how to do it. And this is the pipetting action between the source and the target. To define the pipetting, we go to the actions list, select the remove action, and place it on our source, the tubes. Check the box for our target, plate one, and click done. And our red outline indicates we need to set the properties, so we double click. And notice the two red dots, one is for an empty transfer pattern, and the other is for our volume. So we can set the volume to 10 microliters and the dot disappears. 
And now for the transfer pattern. By clicking on the ellipsis, the transfer pattern document appears. And we will select the first 16 tubes from our source, 10 microliters each, to the first two columns of our 96 well target plate. And we'll click Done at the bottom. And now our transfer pattern has been generated because every pipette requires either a transfer pattern or a work list. And finally, the tips that we use are shared resources. Just like a trough of liquid, it can be used by any assay. So the settings are here for the tip rack. It has a starting and ending position. We know that's res tips, and you can choose the type of tips right here. There are other settings, including tip management, so we verify that our pickup position is res tips and the eject position is the tip waste and all the other pipetting properties such as selecting a liquid class or details about aspiration and dispense can be examined later. And now we can save our assay with a good identifying name. This assay will be simulated in the next video named Simulate an Assay where you will watch the animation of the 3D model and learn more about Instinct V.